You've got your brand new CPU, but you're like, hey, I want to really get the power out of it. What do I do now? <laughs> well, welcome to the world of overclocking, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what we're going to teach you today on today's video. I am here on site at Origin PC. And you might be like, Roby, why are you at Origin to do this? Number one, hey, huge shout out to Origin and Intel for sponsoring this video. But the second thing is that people may not know about overclocking is that if you overclock your new CPU and you didn't necessarily get it from like a pre-built company like Origin, then it can actually uh, void your warranty. So one of the reasons we're showing it here and we're, and we're looking at one of Origin's brand new 13th gen systems, is to show that if you were able to get one, and there are other companies that do this, but like Origin, if you were to get one, you can actually just ink that much more power out of your CPU by doing what we're gonna show here today. But let's talk about why 13th gen. So Intel, this is their second revision of the Alder, uh, the second revision of the LGA 1700 platform. So we had basically had Alder Lake, and now with Raptor Lake, it's kind of like a fine wine, like not not like a cheap boxed wine. We're talking like a real. $30, is $30 expensive? And it's refined itself. And in doing so, they have done some things that have made it easier to overclock your system. And some of that is with XTU. And especially on the 13.6 and 13.7, you have a lot more thermal headroom. And where, where overclocking ends up being a lot of fun is actually on kind of some of the lower in stacked CPUs as part of 13th gen. I'm excited about it. Like, I, I wanna overclock. What are the tools? What are the things that you have on your PC here? It says Cinebench, you can just download this is from Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft Windows Store. If you have Windows 11 and Windows 10, it's free. And the second thing you see here is I have a thing called CPU ID monitor. While we're running things, this is what's gonna help us see stuff like your temps, etc. The other thing that we have on here is a thing called Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. And this is a new, newly updated tool. With XTU, you can real-time overclock your Intel CPU. Unlike when you have to do the BIOS, where you go into the BIOS, you then have to set your settings, you load into Windows, you do your stuff, and if it crashes, you have to reset things uh, in the BIOS again. The last thing for games is that I use this thing called MSI Afterburner. Well, Roby, what if you have an Asus board or, or anything like that? Doesn't matter. It works with absolutely everything. Roby, you just dumped so much information inside of my brain and it just hurts. How do I actually overclock? What are you talking about? Like, what, what am I supposed to do? First thing you need to know, how does your actual system run? So you've popped open your Origin PC box, you're like, ooh, ah, it looks so amazing. You gotta see what kind of thermal headroom we've actually got. First thing I wanna do is open up uh, my hardware info monitor. Isn't it pretty? It's a lot of text, yes, I know. These are showing you the clocks of the P cores and the E cores, and you can see it's actually running at 5543, right around where it's supposed to. So let's start. What you're gonna do is you're gonna basically open up Cinebench, which you have downloaded, if you remember, and it's gonna pop up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run Cinebench for about 15 minutes, okay? Basically soak your CPU and your cooling to know where you're gonna basically be at thermal max. So this is what we're essentially gonna do here. And you can see right over here, we're gonna start looking at these temperatures. And you can see right now we're gonna sit at 75. We're gonna see where this number is, this max number is at the end of 15 minutes. For the 15 minutes I'm gonna dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have run, let it run for 15 minutes. You can see that, great, we have a score. But what I care more about right here is this thing where 94 degrees Celsius. And this is a pretty important part. If you are going to overclock, then temperature, fans, all those sort of things are going to matter a whole lot more. Because again, you're now pushing the CPU well beyond. And sometimes when you look at companies and what they give you, they may give you just enough adequate cooling for the PC as you're getting it. But if you're gonna overclock, you may have to do some changes, like for, for instance, replace fans, et cetera, to just give you a little bit more headroom. Fortunately, there are things that you can do to bring that down. And that's the next step we're gonna talk about is called what's called undervolting. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna see if we can get that 94C down. And then from there, give us a, ourselves some more headroom. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up XTU. This is brand new with XTU. And XTU, this is called a compact mode. If you just wanna be simple and you just wanna get a little bit of extra, you can turn on this thing called automatic overclock. This is all all core, which means every single core that you have on your i9, your i7, or your i5 will be overclocked on this performance core ratio and on this e-core ratio and then also the CPU voltage offset. You can actually do undervolting right here by just playing with this core offset. So we're gonna go play with this and figure out where we ended up and then uh, figure out what we can do with this particular CPU. So I played with it a bit. 
And you can see, like, we played with a bit, and you, you, our Cinebench numbers, you can actually see that, that that jumped up. You guys were seeing that a little bit earlier before. But now that we got it, we can do about 0.4, and uh, that was a 0.04, sorry, 0.04 volts. Uh, and all in all, like, we ended up with a higher number in terms of the Cinebench score, which means our performance was up. At the same time, we dropped our temperatures by almost eight degrees. I, I know this may seem confusing, but if you have questions about this and you just want to get more information, head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash robitech. We have people who would love to answer questions about this if you're just getting a little confused and this is going not as clear as it needs to be. But let's go to advanced mode and just talk a little bit about the larger version of this. So let's we're gonna go to advanced tuning. And then here we still have the same stuff that we were kind of used to before with basically our, our main active cars. This The other stuff that's actually really cool here is the TVP offset stuff. Um, this is actually a lot of fun to play with. And then you can do what's called per temperature uh, modification. So like, hey, I know that if my temperature gets above, like I can run five, nine, six, seven, gigahertz, uh, not really, uh, as long as my temperature is less than, you know, 70 or 80 degrees, then you can actually say this TVB temperature and that actually sets your offset to drop it by one, two, three, four, five, six hundred megahertz. And then you even have a second one that you could do. Um, so you could actually create temperature curves per core for your actual overclocks, which is actually pretty neat. There actually is a stress test here. I just like Cinebench because it's a little bit faster and you can watch temps a little bit more actively. This right here is your profiles. You don't have to go back in the BIOS and then try and retune it down. This has actually got a saved profile. It will stay resident on restart every time until something went the watchdog where uh, something becomes unstable, then it will go back to default. Now this is the kind of the coolest thing and this is something that you can't do uh, with your BIOS and this is called profile pairing. I can actually go and load a particular overclock profile and then for everything else, it would just stay off. So for instance, if you're Valorant or you're playing CSGO and you really wanna make sure you have 360 Hertz, so you can sit there and add an app on app profile, attach it to Valorant, and then basically when Valorant runs, it loads a very, very specific overclock setting. This is some of the really cool stuff about Intel Extreme tuning utility versus doing something like doing it in BIOS. And again, the other thing that's always a great bonus is the fact that you can do it all real time. Now let's talk about overclocking. Now for overclocking, we're gonna reset the whole thing. First thing I do is these, setting these these right here, Turbo Boost Power Max to Unlimited, your Turbo Boost Power Time went into 128, and then setting your Turbo, your turbo Boost Short Power Max to Unlimited are gonna be no problem, you're not gonna have an issue here. I would, I always set this to unlimited. If you end up having problems, go back to 400 and then step it up by 25, uh, basically so 425, 450, and then continue to basically run Cinebench until you can find out where, how much amperage you have. And this is where motherboards actually can make a difference is that certain motherboards are built to basically support, you know, unlimited amperage. Given what we know, what we have here with a Maximus, we can set this to unlimited. So if we got one active core, we're gonna be at six gigahertz. If we have two active cores, we're gonna be at, uh, six gigahertz. If we get three active cores, let's put it up to five, eight. We'll see what we can do here. We're gonna, we'll, we'll play with this a little bit. We'll set it at five. We'll go to five, six, five, six, five, six, and five, six. So we've now got on all cores, essentially a 100 megahertz overclock if every core is active. Let's go ahead and apply this. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit start our multi-core and we should see five sixes running pretty, pretty average here. There we go. We're seeing five, six across all cores. Okay, so that seemed okay. A little bit more, let's go to five, seven, all core. We didn't see any thro throttle here. Now, temperature wise, we saw 92 already, 97. Uh, we, this might be, this might be a little bit much for our cooler. Oh, there it goes, there it is. Okay, even though we saw our temps at 96 or 97, you were, we're gonna go into gaming and show this. You're gonna see our temps are gonna be absolutely fine with that kind of overclock. So let's go ahead and bring this back up. So we're running six on one and two cores, and then we're gonna run five, seven on three or more. I'd love to see if we can get five, seven for the most part on all cores. Oh, okay, so that's, we're at the edge here. We're at the edge. We didn't crash. This is it, we've got it right here. Five, six across the board. There is our overclock and we're good, we're locked in. That's awesome, so now we have our overclock and you're like, Roby, those temps. I wanna show you just realistically, once you have an overclock for most applications, specifically gaming, what your temps are actually going to be like. Couple things that you're seeing up here, this is actually MSI Afterburner, so you can see we're running a 3090 Ti. Here's the temperatures right now in our, our 13900K, and then this is the percentage that we're running, and then you've got uh, basically how much RAM we're using and then what our frame rate is. Start benchmark mode, and then you'll basically get to see this. And I want you to pay attention to this number right here, which is, this is the number you care about. Again, we were running 96 before, but you can see with an overclock, which we're getting right now, and you're seeing five eights and five sixes across the board, 
our temperatures are not gonna be anywhere near that. Temperatures right now are sitting in the 60s, so no problem here uh, whatsoever in terms of running this. You will actually get a higher performance boost from overclocking when you are running in full screen because then the number of cores that this is actually using is dedicated and so you'll actually see a higher number. Another game, uh, we'll run it at 1080p. Let's go to options, let's go to display and graphics. Just verifying we're DX12, DLSS is off. Uh, all of the other stuff is basically set to whatever it was. Our graphics is set to the highest. And then what we're gonna do is just run our benchmark. Our overclock is still enabled. We're seeing five, we've now seen 5.8 on all the cores at one point in time. The highest we ever got was 72. And that's not from, you know, that's not from gaming. That's just from using Windows and using applications, which any cooler 360 millimeter AIO would be completely fine with. And leaving your, you know, leaving your overclock completely set for that is absolutely fine. Whew. That was a lot, and I know there was so much that we just kind of unpacked in this video, but hopefully you learned something. I mean, that's what you needed to do. You actually needed to learn something, and I hope we actually got to teach you something uh, here on the show today. So, here's the deal. Love to get some feedback on this. Number one, number one, did you actually learn something? And if so, what was that? Number two, was there stuff that we kind of glossed over that just wasn't entirely clear that we could do better as we do more of these in the future? Because I'd love to know uh, if, if this was something that you had been so afraid of and maybe we made that just a little bit more approachable. So let us know all that and more down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, right, you guys, while you're down there in the comments, just, just typing away, telling us your life story, just typing it all out, down, you, you might see this button and it says, subscribe and it says like and it's got that little notification bell so if you like this video and i hope you did from the bottom of my heart then go ahead and hit that subscription did you know that we're also live streaming this in fact we're doing it on our big brother channel roby tech live which uh is down in the description below so you can head over there uh, and actually watch this live not only that but we also do this live all the time uh, with uh, multitudes of different builds. So if you guys want to see that with 4090s or 3090s or whatever, uh, you can absolutely do that. And check that out at Roby Tech Live down in the description below. What if I need to know more? I forgot something or maybe the video wasn't clear on one other thing. Then head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash We can go and talk with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to talk about these very same things and, and do their overclocking all the time. So a great place to hang out. And you know what, who knows? you might make a friend. So follow us at Robitech absolutely everywhere um, if you wanna just follow and see more cool content just like this. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.